Hey lovelies, it's MLP with Lovely Lulu Designs and in this video I will show you how to make this dual split wood grain and marble tumbler. For this project I used a combination of spray paints and alcohol ink. As always I will link the materials I used to create this tumbler in the description section of this video. For my Canadian and US viewers I also wanted to announce that I finally have made my own website for selling my digital designs. My new site is www.lovelyluludesigns.com and will also be linked in the description section of this video. I currently don't have all of my designs transferred over yet, however, I am slowly working on adding them to the site as I start to transition away from Etsy. You will need an account to purchase through the site, but this will allow you to access your paid files whenever you need them by signing into your account. The website outlines the terms of use for designs, as well as as a section for all of my tutorials. Each tutorial also has a link to the files used to create the tumblers if you want to follow along and recreate them as seen. Finally, I've had some requests to create a Facebook group and have also done that. This group is called Lovely Creations and will be linked in the description section of this video as well. This group is a place where members can find out about sales, new tutorials, and new designs as soon as they're released, where you can ask questions related to techniques or designs, request designs, share your work, and I'm even hoping to be able to do some live tutorials. Group members will also have access to an exclusive group discount code for my website. Also, I have a lot of people ask where they can purchase completed tumblers. Tumblers will be listed for sale in the group first and then released on my Facebook business page the following day if it doesn't sell right away. Those are all the announcements I have for you, so let's get started. For today, I'm going to be using the 30 ounce skinny tumbler. This is not the straight. There is a slight taper here from top to bottom. I just don't have any straight of the 30 ounce in stock right now. Um, but you can do this on a straight, a skinny, a 20 ounce, a 15 ounce, really anything that you want. You don't even have to technically use this shape, but it's the shape that I like for the style. Um, so basically I'm starting as always with a fully prepped tumbler. This means that it has been sanded, cleaned with Dawn dish soap, and I have spray painted it as well. So today I used a bit of a different primer or sorry a bit of a different spray paint than what I usually use. I usually use for gold Rust-Oleum um, 2x which is the built-in primer and paint as well. However I was out of stock and we are currently at a state home order where I live and the last time I tried to place an order through Home Depot for pickup it took a number of days for it to be filled. So a friend of mine Amanda Apal from Newfound Finishes had found Graffiti Boulevard in Toronto and they had spray paints that were really reasonably priced and they're the ones that I've seen sort of floating around in other um, videos or other things, uh, Facebook groups where people have mentioned them, and that is the Montana Paints, the 94 line, and I used mine in uh, metal frame gold. Um, I actually really like these paints. As I mentioned, they were a good price. I don't think they have a built-in primer though, so I did first use a white primer. Um, I used Premier Brand from Canadian Tire to prime it first. Once that was dry, I then added this. I found it had really nice coverage. Um, it dried very, very quickly to the touch, and it was... Um, I did a very, very quick job on this, and I didn't really have any issues with drips. A little bit here, but that was just for me being careless and overspraying, but really um, it had great coverage and it was nice and even and very minimal drips. So I really like this brand, but I do recommend using a primer with it before you spray paint with this. So I will link Graffiti Boulevard from Toronto, um, where I got these as well in the description section, as well as DAHT merchandise for the tumblers. I believe her, her um, even though they're listed as the, the skinny tumblers, they are actually the straight ones, which means that there's no taper from top to bottom. So the first step that I'm going to be doing is this is going to be a dual split tumbler um, with a uh, band here sort of on the bottom in one style and another one on the top, and then I'm going to use vinyl to separate the two sections. And in order to do that, I have a new toy which I wanted to show you guys. I've actually had it for a little while. I just haven't um, done a tutorial like this since I've received it. So this is a 3D printed pencil gauge, which I purchased through Etsy from Thomas Michael Makes, and I will put the link in the description as well. Um, when I first purchased this, it was, um, I see, had seen it in a Facebook group and um, I purchased it right away as soon as I saw it. So this was a while back. He now has a different version as well, specifically for tumblers. This was originally meant for woodworking, but he had a lot of tumbler makers um, coming from these posts that were sharing this. Um, so I'm going to do another plug for it as well because I actually find it's a really great tool. So basically it has a, a bolt here and then this little turn piece here. When you have it pushed tight against your platform, it doesn't do anything, but when you pull it out, it locks around your bolt and then you can loosen it and tighten it and you can readjust the platform as you see fit. 
um, just to kind of get uh, whichever height you want to do. And then what I did was I just pre-marked based on previous tumblers that I had made where I liked my ratios. I just pre-marked it with a marker, a permanent marker, Sharpie, I think. And I, I labeled what I used it for. And um, as you can see, the pencil just slides in. I find the pencil fitting is a little bit tight. It does um, dig into my pencil there a little bit. However, it is really, really great. I love it. I prefer it to having to stack containers because I don't have to remember which containers I stacked. Um, so this is a great little tool. He has newer ones as well, specifically for tumblers, which have a platform as well as a little piece, which is like a semicircle for a lid in case you want to put your tumbler or sorry, your platform directly onto your tumbler. In order to show you how I use mine, however, I'm going to have to just quickly change my camera angle. So I will do that now and then we will come back up to the overhead. So here's another close up of the tool. So this is the platform here. And as you can see, I have my pencil just slightly um, poking out past the platform because I use the platform directly on the table rather than putting it onto the top part of my tumbler like so. If I were to use it like this, the tump or the pencil would be pushed way back in here. So the way that I do it is I put it on my desk and I take my fingers and I just apply some pressure right here. So that way it keeps it level and it prevents it from popping up like this. And then I take my tumbler and I rest it right against my pencil, like so. And then you just start to turn your tumbler around. It doesn't have to be with a lot of pressure. You don't have to be pushing hard here on the pencil. It's just a light line that you're gonna be drawing just so we can get that tape line. So we make sure that we have a straight section when we're sectioning our tumbler in two. And I do have people question me about how I determine the height of each section for me. Honestly, I don't have a specific technique for that. I just sort of do what feels comfortable. And that might sound silly, but it's true. If I find the lines are not quite where I want them to be, I actually feel physical discomfort. And once I have a ratio that I like the look of, I, my body kind of relaxes. So there's no rhyme or reason to it. It's just what you, what you prefer and what you like. So I've got my line drawn here. So now I'm ready to move on to taping it. My next step is going to be to tape the tumbler off. And there's a couple things that I want to consider before I'm doing this. The first thing that I want to consider is what side of the tumbler am I going to be wanting to do first? So in this case, my top part is going to be alcohol inks and my bottom part is going to be starting with acrylics and then will be a hydro dip. I know that even if I'm using um, vinyl or frog tape or any type of tape to tape it off, ink and alcohol has a way of seeping underneath kind of affecting my lines. So what I want to do is I want to do my alcohol ink part first because then I can cover up any ink on the bottom that may seep through with my second step. Even with that said though, if there is a little bit of imperfection around the line itself, that's not going to be a huge deal because we are going to be doing a vinyl band to cover that. I just don't want it to be um, a large area that would be affected where I would have to do a wider band than maybe I intended when I was originally setting out to do this design. So that's the first thing I want to consider. Second thing I want to consider is what tape I should be using. I do find when it comes to alcohol inks, which as I mentioned, have a way of seeping under the tape, um, even though I have more leakage on uh, painter's tape than I do on say a vinyl, like say electrical tape, or even just 631 or 651 Oracle vinyl. Um, this is still the better option for taping for me because it is a lot more rigid. So there's not a lot of flexibility here. So it does help me to get that straight line without having sort of waves um, in my line around my tumbler. So this is always what I choose to use when I'm taping my tumblers off. So the way that I do this is I just pull a piece of tape off of my roll and I bring it up to my line. So knowing that I'm going to be doing the top half first, I'm going to be taping under that line and I'm going to just start following it all the way around the tumbler. If there are going to be creases on my tape, because as I mentioned, it's not very flexible tape and I do have a slight taper on this tumbler, I want my creases to be on the bottom section because then it's not going to be affecting my tape line on the top. And then I just take off any of the excess and I just take my tape and right on the edge there, I just give it a little tab. So that makes it easier for me to pull that when I need to, especially if you're going to be working with epoxy at some point, um, it's just easier to kind of pull a tab that's already exposed. So if you look here, you can see a couple little um, ripples in my tape. Maybe you can't, I'm not sure on the bottom. That's totally fine. It's more the top that I'm concerned about. So now I'm just going to take my thumb and I'm going to just go around 
putting pressure along that top line to try to make sure that it is as stuck to the tumbler as it possibly can be to help reduce as much bleeding as I can. My next step now is going to be to start getting my alcohol ink onto the tumbler. I know I've already done a wood grain tutorial, however, I've had a few people ask if I can show them how I do it with the brown color as opposed to with the black that I stretched out to make a gray. Um, so I'm going to be using teak wood from um, Tim Holtz as my brown. It's my favorite one for the wood tumblers, um, for the wood grain tumblers, when I'm going to be using a brown wood. And I also find that I like to use a gold background on it. Now this palette that I'm doing today and this technique is based on, I've been looking at some different um, kitchen designs because I am going to be renovating my kitchen early next year. So I kind of got some inspiration from some of the pairings I saw from that and thought that it would, could make a pretty cool Father's Day tumbler. So I decided that I wanted to have the gold pull through on both my top and my bottom section. And I actually really like the the gold base that this gives because it does give um coming kind of coming from behind the alcohol inks a nice gold metallic sort of look to it if you don't like that look you can absolutely do a light light tan or um, off-white or you can even just use a bright white um, but always use a light color something that will complement your wood color so in this case i'm going to be using as i mentioned teak wood from tim holtz i'm also going to be using some 99 percent alcohol i just get mine from costco this i got from shades of clay so i'm going to link that as well and i use just a small glass dish and i'm just going to pour it you don't need a lot I'm just going to pour some of that in there. I'm also going to take a small piece of parchment paper for later. I have a piece of paper towel for dabbing off any either ink or alcohol that gets into my brush that is too much excessive. And I have different brushes. So to get the wood grain, you want to use um, old chip style brushes. This one here is my wider flat one, which is what I'm going to be using to apply most of my base color. This one here is a small, very rough bristle, which I'm going to be using to add some additional texture into my wood grain and also a little bit on my knots. And this is a smaller point tip brush, which I'm going to be using. Let's see how close I can get there, which I'm going to be using to work on my knots. So that's going to be my materials that I'm going to use. I ended up getting some warm regards eco glitter on my glove. So that's unfortunate. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to shake up my alcohol ink a little bit to make sure it's mixed and I'm going to be applying it directly to my tumbler. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that I do have it taped off here. So if I were to put this directly onto my tumbler and it runs down the cup, it's going to pool and run on either side down here, which is going to give me these sort of weird lines. So what I like to do when I'm applying close to that is I actually tilt my tumbler away from me so it runs down, not towards the tape. So there's a little tip for you when you're doing this. So I'm going to start off, like I said, by just getting the color on the tumbler and adding it directly. And to get the color on my tumbler, I'm going to mostly be using my wider brush. And you just brush it on and you can already see right in there, it's giving you some strokes from a wood grain in there. In some cases, I'm going to start directly from the bottom and work my way up, maybe not going all the way to the top, but just up. And you're working in long vertical strokes. And then I can come down from the top in this case. And you're going to start seeing that when you kind of play with it that way by doing different lengths, different starting points, it does give some additional texture into your wood grain, which is really, really nice. So I'm going to sort of speed this up, maybe cut out parts that aren't important um, and just kind of get the color on the cup to start off with. So right there, like I said, you can kind of see some of those um, textures already taking form without having really done anything but put the color on the tumbler. One of the things that I do want to mention really quickly, though, is that um, you should be protecting your work surface as well as anything around you. So when you are using alcohol ink and a brush, you're flinging your ink. So if you like your walls that are behind you or around you, or if you have other projects that you're working on, definitely move them out of the way. Protect your desk surface, protect your walls, even protect your clothing. I really like to wear gloves when I'm working with alcohol inks because alcohol inks do stain your skin and um, it can be really hard to get off. And even though I'm using a brush, it does have a tendency to make its way onto my hands. So I definitely recommend gloves as well.
I have the color on my tumbler. There's just a couple things that you want to be looking for when you're doing it. And one is going to be if you have any uh, holes in your design. So right here, as you can see, when I was putting it for whatever reason, I wasn't able to stretch the color directly over this part here. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm just going to take a little bit more alcohol and this time I'm going to start using my smaller brush just to add a little bit more texture and detail. I also have a section here which I don't really like that looks a little bit too smooth. I'm not sure if the camera's picking that up but for me it's not quite where I want it to be. So I have right here, here a spot, here a spot, here a spot, and here a spot. So I'm going to see if I can work with this at all with just the ink and a smaller brush and sort of see if I'm able to brush it out and kind of give me an effect that I like. And that's pretty good. And I'm going to do the same right here. Now sometimes what happens is as you're adding ink, rather than adding a darker version of the color, it does start to pull the color away. So it actually ends up looking a little bit lighter behind that, but that's okay because it does help add texture to your wood grain. So there's a couple spots there, but what might end up happening is you might have a few of those and you don't like them so close together. So that's how I determine where I want to put a knot. So let's start on our knots. So like I said, I've got a couple of different brushes to do my knots with. And I also have this parchment paper, which I haven't used yet. And I've also got my alcohol. So I'm going to start off by adding on this section here, a dot of alcohol, and I'm just gonna blow it out a little bit, put it up and down, literally just using my mouth to blow on it. And that's going to help me to sort of define some natural looking edges, not that it's perfectly brushed on and perfectly shaped. So that's how I'm going to start my journey with my knots. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my alcohol and I'm going to put it on some parchment paper and I'm going to take my smaller brush. And this is just a watercolor brush. And I'm going to take this in and I'm just going to start defining my edges a little bit more. And you can use the alcohol for this. And just wipe off any excess to kind of move it around. or you can use um, the alcohol, or sorry, the alcohol ink. It's really however it is that you want to do it. So I'm just giving it a little bit of a thick border by moving around and lightening some of the center parts but staying within the shape of the knot. So that there is the outer edge of my knot. Now I'm going to want to add a little bit more. So I'm just going to take a small amount and I'm just going to dot it. And I'm going to help guide sort of where I want that to go with my brush. Now you're going to notice that I had a little splatter right here. That's okay because we're going to be working on the wood grain around it as well. All right, there we go. Now, now because we're getting smaller, I don't really want to add it directly to the cup like that. I would rather just add a bunch onto my brush. And I'm looking to add another ring into that knot. So I'm just using a combination of my watercolor brush and of blowing on it to help push the ink into that second sort of borderline within that knot. Now I'm going to take some more and I'm going to again apply it into the center and we're going to make another ring in here. All 
And we're just going to keep going like this, adding more rings, smaller and smaller, on the inside. And we kind of keep doing that until we have a knot that we like. So now, if you look at wood grain on an actual piece of wood, you're going to notice that the knot doesn't just sit on top of the wood grain. It kind of affects the grain around it as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my original, no, it's a smaller knot, so I'm going to use my smaller brush. And I'm going to take the tiniest amount of alcohol and I'm going to dab it off. I do not want a lot. If you use too much, you can always fix it. Alcohol ink is very forgiving, but you do not want to use a lot. And basically what I'm going to do is I'm start going to start sort of going around the borders of my knot, kind of following the flow of it, blending in that splatter that I had accidentally made. If you need to add a little more, it's better to have too little and have to add more than to add too much and have to fix it. So, so just following around my knot. Now I'm going to take my larger bristle brush and I'm just going to be blending it in and I'm going over my knot as well to add a little bit of the green into that those strokes. I'm now going to take my larger brush and I'm really 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 going to dry it up as much as I can and I'm just going to kind of help blend it a little bit with the wood grain around it. And you can use your smaller one in here as well just to give it a little bit more textures. And that is our first knot. So that's what I'm going to continue doing using different shapes going around my tumbler until I am happy with my results. I usually do three, sometimes four knots, depending on how large the knots themselves are. My wood grain is now done. I have all of my knots nestled nicely within the wood grain as well. I decided to do a total of four. There's three, uh, sorry, two of them, which are sort of partial knots. They're kind of right on the edges of my cup and then two, which are the full knots. And I also left a sort of smoother wood grain area here, which is where I'm planning on putting my label for this tumbler. My next step now that I've got my wood grain done and I'm happy with it is going to be to seal it because a lot of different things can reactivate your um, your alcohol inks including like straight epoxy it can also potentially discolor it i have let this dry for a few hours and now i'm going to be moving on to my spray seal my final step on sealing this before it goes to epoxy is going to be using cc diy quick coat which is a brush on sealer but that does reactivate it and i don't want to damage any of the artwork that i've already done on this so like i mentioned i'm just going to do three light coats of a spray sealer and i mean light coats you don't want to be concentrating your spray anywhere because you can get um, little like dots or circles from 
too much sealer in like one section or it can start running your inks. So definitely use some lighter coats. I do have a how to spray paint your tumbler tutorial, which I will link right here in the video as well. Follow that sort of technique um, where you're just sort of brushing back and forth with your spray sealer and you should be fine. You're going to want to let them dry between each quote, uh, each coat. And then my final coat of quick coat, when that is still wet, I will pull at that point this tape. I find that with quick coat, if I let it dry and then I pull the tape, it peels the sealer back. So while it is still wet, pull your tape. So those are going to be my next steps. And then I'm going to come back and show you guys what I will do after I've already got this sealed. So I've applied three light coats of the Krylon UV resistant gloss clear acrylic coating. Um, I had thought I ordered Kmar. I actually checked my order history. I did order Kmar, but the company accidentally sent me five bottles of Krylon instead of the Kmar, which is recommended when you're working for alcohol inks, but this one did work well for me as well. Um, however, I do find that if I haven't let this sit for, you know, close to seven days, I do sometimes get fish eyes in my epoxy. One of the ways to prevent that is to use a coat of quick coat, which is one of the reasons why I like quick coat so much. It does help act as a bridge, um, and it's a fantastic brush on sealer. So for the quick coat, I apply it with a tack on brush. Um, so this is just what it looks like here. I get mine off of Amazon. I will link it in the description as well. I just put a little bit in a dish. This bottle is almost empty. So this quick coat is by CC DIY. Um, I also use CC DIY epoxy. I use the medium viscosity. And if you are purchasing CC DIY products, just a reminder that they are currently only available um, through M and Cat Glitter Factory. Um, if you're, if, like I said, if you're shopping out of Canada. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to apply a small amount onto my brush and I'm just going to apply it in long, even vertical strokes. It does not take a lot. Whatever I don't use in my dish, I can just put back into the bottle. And you'll notice that once you've added the sealers, your colors really pop and the wood grain really comes out and all of those nice smaller details that you had, um, especially that that gold background really kind of come out and it adds a little bit of extra dimension to your texture and it's really really nice so I'm just starting on my tape line and I'm pulling my clear gloss up right to the rim in smooth even strokes and what I'm going to do as soon as I'm done with this is I will pull my tape because like I mentioned, I don't want to risk my clear coat dry or yeah, drying and then accidentally peeling back my, my, um, sealer that I just put on, but I'm also going to pop it on my turner just so that I don't have any pooling of the gloss. Uh, so now I'm just going to pull this and I actually got a really decent, line just a little bit of bleeding here but that's not a big deal we're going to cover that up the reason why i leave my tape on until i finish clear uh using the clear coat is because if i get clear coat on here um, but not on any other part of the cup and when i'm talking about clear coat i'm talking about my brush on it might take my acrylics differently on that section than it will on the other and i just wanted to avoid that so i like to wait until i'm done fully sealing this top half so that way i'm using a consistent base um, on the bottom for when I'm going to be adding my acrylics. The quick coat is now completely dry and you want to make sure before you move on to your next step that it's not only dry but it's also totally hardened. You don't want to have it um, have any bit of tack to it. I did let mine dry overnight. That's excessive. It's not necessary but it was the end of the day for me when I did it and I would rather be safe to make sure that this is fully hardened than sorry. Um, the length of how long it's going to take to dry is going to depend on a couple of things. First of all, how thick you put your layer on. Second of all, how humid your dry or your area is where it's drying, how warm your area is where it's drying. Just like with epoxy, those types of environmental things are also going to affect your dry time. So I don't want to give an exact time, but a couple hours and you should be safe. Um, but always check it, make sure that it's not tacky or sticky at all because you don't want to have your tape do any damage to your quick coat layer. So the next thing I want to do is I want to start working on my bottom section of this tumbler. So I want to tape off my line again. So I'm just going to do the same thing that I did before. I'm going to take a piece of painter's tape, only this time I'm going to be lining my tape up along the bottom section, or sorry, the top section. So that way I can decorate the bottom section. Same 
same as before. I'm just going to rip off things that are too excessive and fold that over to leave myself an easy pull tab. Then you can see here, I have a little bit of puckering. So what I'm going to do is wherever that has happened, I'm going to just press that tape down firmly with my thumb to try to give myself as good a seal as possible from that tape. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna be doing is I'm going to be using acrylic paint onto the base. I am going to be hydro dripping this for a marble look, um, but before I do that, I wanna add a little bit of a stone-like texture to this, and I'm going to be achieving that by using a sponge, um, one of these sea sponges. Um, I got this off of Amazon. You can also get these from Michael's. You can get them from, uh, if you're in the States, you can get them from Joann's or any other craft place. It doesn't need to necessarily be a sea sponge though. You can also buy an, any other type of porous sponge and just cut it up into smaller pieces. So like the, the sponges for washing your car or the large um, bath and body sponges and that type of thing. This is something that uh, a technique I originally saw by, uh, in a tutorial by Amanda Dickinson in Damn Fancy Creations Facebook group. I believe that's where I saw it with her hand painted uh, marble that she did. And I really loved how she used this texture in it. And it's a texture that I use in a lot of my work, um, not just the type that she does with the marble, but for, back, for backgrounds or for texture for other things as well. So this is a really lovely technique. Um, it gives you really nice results. So I'm gonna be using just a small bowl and some Mars black acrylic paint. You're not gonna need a lot. That's probably way more than what I'm gonna need. And, or not because it might get absorbed into the sponge. And I'm just gonna kind of start filling my sponge, but I don't want it to be like super drippy or runny. So I'm just sort of putting it uh, kind of putting it deep into the sponge by dabbing it like this. Now what I'm gonna do, I do like to use a glove to protect my fingers so they don't stain with the paint. And you're just gonna start dabbing it on. And you can leave as much gold exposure from your paint as you want. You can make it as black as you want, but the point is you're just dabbing this on. And I like to change direction so you get different texture you're not always following the same pattern. And you also wanna be careful not to get paint on the bottom section. So if you're someone who's messy, you might wanna add either a second piece of tape or you might wanna add um, some saran wrap or something around your top half to kind of protect that. But I'm just going to be a little more careful with where I am dabbing. actually did need a little more paint. Usually I use a smaller piece of sponge so it doesn't absorb quite as much and then you don't need as much paint when you do that but I wanted to try a larger texture pattern so I chose a bigger piece of sponge today. Don't forget to do your bottoms. And again this is personal preference you can leave as much exposed as you want but once you are happy with your coverage, you can just stop and let your paint dry. Okay, so overall, I'm really happy with my coverage here. I'm going to leave this to dry now, and then what I'm going to do next, you don't have to do this step, but what I am going to do next is I'm going to completely epoxy my entire tumbler. So I can now remove this paint line. And I'm going to epoxy my tumbler because I wanna add a level of protection that after I hydro dip this, if I don't like my dip, I can just take some acetone and wipe it away. I don't have to worry about bringing it back down to basically stainless steel so I'm not having too much texture um, and having to restart the bottom half process again. That's not something you have to do. I've made enough tumblers to know that sometimes when I dip them, I don't like the look and I do want to wipe them. And then I would much rather just have to wipe it off of a layer of epoxy than have to start over again. So that's the step that I'm going to take. I'm going to let this fully dry. Then I'm going to add a thin coat of epoxy. And then I will take you guys over to my sink where I will show you how I'm going to dip it. Remember when I said I made enough tumblers to know better that I should be sealing before I hydro dip because if I don't like it, I can easily wipe it off. Um, apparently that lesson not completely learned. 
So I've also made enough tumblers that I should know better that I don't skip any steps. And one step I did skip was I didn't put quick coat on the bottom half of my tumbler. This was silly for two reasons. First of all, it was my first time working with this brand of spray paint, so I did not know how it was going to react with the epoxy. The second reason is that sometimes things in our materials will somehow get contaminated and can repel epoxy. And that is exactly what happened when I put epoxy on this tumbler, even though this had been on there for over a week, so it was fully cured. And even though I had my acrylic paint that I've I've gone over without sealing first, um, completely dry on this tumbler as well before epoxy, I ended up getting crazy, crazy craters and fish eyes. So that was not ideal for me. It ended up me trying to save time and skip a step caused a lot of extra time. And I do know better than that, but I was, you know, trying to get this done as fast as possible. I skipped a step. So rule number two, rule number one for me is the detail is in the layers. Rule number two is never skip a step. And I learned that again, the hard way, maybe this time I've learned my lesson, maybe not. But anyway, craters are now filled. It's completely epoxied and smooth. Um, I did do a light scuffing because it has been 24 hours since I put any epoxy on here. So I don't want to have issues where the epoxy doesn't have anything to catch on to. And I have a weak bond between my two layers. Um, this will help make your tumblers more durable in case of drops. Uh, or falls. So my next step is going to be to start prepping this guy for hydro dipping. So I'm going to once again be taping off this line. So I'm going to take another piece of painter's tape. And just like before, I'm just going to rip a piece off. And I'm going to line it up to the line here that we started with. I'm going to be hydro dipping from the top down into the bottom, but sometimes what I would do is I would add saran wrap and then I would tape the saran wrap on, but that's upstairs. And I mean, if I just said don't skip steps and I'm too lazy to go upstairs, but what I'm going to do instead, I'm going to add a second layer of painter's tape. And I do have a thicker band here, which I will use for this, um, to help give me more protection. But I also know that this is, uh, sealed with epoxy so that if I do need to wipe off a little bit that maybe gets on the top section if I accidentally dip too deep um, I can do that because I do have the epoxy on there so I decided to come outside for the hydro dip portion of what we're doing and what I have here is I just have a bucket with um, some lukewarm water in it. The water's clean. I also have with me a piece of cardboard that I'm going to use to skim out any paint if I need to refresh the paint because I don't like the pattern that I'm getting on here. Or if I wanted to do a second dip, I would um, clear it out with this prior to dipping. I also have, um, I just have a dowel that I use to kind of mix up my paints to put a little bit of a pattern in it and also to adhere it to the sides of the, of the um, bucket before I get ready to dip it. I have my paint colors as well. I just took the opportunity to shake them up already. You want these to be well shaken before you start dipping. Um, I'm outside because I'm going to be using the spray paints. In the past, I've used the Marabou um, marbling paint uh, where you just sort of put them in. You can do it indoors. Um, I've got an, another video on that and I will link that here. However, um, because those are oil-based, they do um, affect your epoxy. It can fish eye if you don't have it properly cleaned and sealed. And even then, I find that sometimes I do have issues with fish eyes. And because I've already had to cover fish eyes on this base, and I don't want this tumbler to be crazy, crazy thick, um, I wanted to stay safe and stick with my spray paints for my marbling. So I have just a black, I have the gold that I used on the base as well, and also just a clear. And what this clear is going to do is it's going to allow for some openings um, in the, the marble to help give me that marbling effect. Usually I would put on my mask. You want to have a mask that is safe for um, volatile organic compounds, so VOCs. You want to have a vapor mask. Um, however, I find that it's really hard to talk in it and it's kind of hard to understand what I'm saying when I'm using it. So I am outdoors, so I am deciding to not use it just for purposes of this, of this video. However, when working with spray paints, I do always recommend you use um, a mask that is safe for uh, those organic vapors. 
So, okay. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to start adding my colors into my water. My water is, as I mentioned, it's lukewarm, it's clean. You only need to have your water as, as deep as what you're going to be dipping it. If I were to be doing a full submersion, I would need more water. I would also wear a glove to protect my hand, and I would also probably have um, a plastic bag or something around my football so my football wouldn't get ruined inside. But I'm not doing a full dip, I'm only doing the bottom section. So I'm just going to get started. I'm going to start by adding some black in some places. I'm going to add the gold. Ooh. A little bit of clear. I'm going to add some more gold in there. And some more black. And you just kind of layer your colors. You can spray at the same time if you want. And again, I want to get some separation in my colors as well to add to that marbling effect. And you do want to work quickly because this can set up. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my dowel and I'm just going to make in some patterns and I'm going to adhere it to the side like so. And I'm going to take my cup and on a slight angle, I'm going to dip. And while dipping, I am also going to rotate. And there is the marbling that I got from it. And you know what? I actually like it off of the one dip, so I'm not going to dip it again. So one of the things I forgot was I forgot to bring out my paper towel, which I used to sort of dab it. And I brought it inside to grab a piece of paper towel and to look at it a little bit more closely in better light. This UV light's kind of hard for me to see in. And I decided that while I did really like the one side with the marbling, the other side is still lacking quite a bit of marbling. So I do want to do one more dip with it. I'm not going to add as much paint this time though. So I just took my little piece of cardboard and I cleaned my water out. You can see here that it's been used to clean the water. And oh, one more piece is kind of being stubborn and floating in there, of course. Did I get it? I think I got it. And I'm going to focus a little bit more on the gold. And I will just add a little bit of black. And now we're going to kind of give it some of that veining. And this time I'm going to use this side to start first and I'm going to do the same thing, apply on an angle and turn in the same direction. Kind of swoosh it around to break it up. And then use my piece of paper towel and I kind of go in right away with the paper towel to just dab it. I'm not rubbing it, I'm just lightly, lightly dabbing it. So you're seeing that not really any colors coming off and if there is it's more just like a glob that was maybe there and this kind of helps prevent any of those bubbles that people complain about and now i'm definitely happier with that marble swirl by just adding a little bit more gold onto the other side so there it is i will i have a little bit here that i now need to clean off that um, kind of contaminated it but because again i I coated this with the epoxy first, I can just take a little bit of acetone and really quickly rub that away. If I do it right away, it won't take any um, elbow grease. I can just wipe it right off. So I'll go do that right now. And then, uh, like I said, um, let this dry and then hit it with some, or, or use a, a brush on quick coat and then let that dry. And then I will, from that point, epoxy it. And then I'll come back to show you the decals. I have here my tumbler that is ready to be decaled. So what I'm going to do, the, the design I'm going to be using today is the dad nameplate that I'm going to be putting on top of the wood grain. Now before I do this piece, I have sort of chosen the side of the cup where I want to put it on. Um, I want to first lay down my band. This band, I'm only going to be doing one. I'm not going to be um, layering with two different bands or three different bands. I'm just going to be doing one single band. It's going to be a little bit wider. So I don't want to have my seam directly underneath uh, the, the decal because this is going to be kind of considered the front of the tumbler. I also want to first lay the band down before I put my nameplate on because this is a little bit of a wider band so it is going to maybe affect sort of where I want to have it height wise which I'm just going to sort of choose visually where, what I think looks good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this cup to what would I basically be considered the back and I'm going to remove this off of the backing paper. 
And then all I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of try to center that on that midline and kind of going as straight as I possibly can. And this, this is flexible. So if you remember that I'd said before the, the painter's tape was pretty rigid, so you wouldn't really get, you get like easier, nice straight lines. You don't really have that um, sort of waviness. This is flexible. So this one here can be a little bit more challenging to lay down straight. So I just sort of try to eyeball it on my first go round. Rarely it lines up well. Sometimes I do get it on the first go but you can always lift it and sort of look at where you need to, to revisit that from. So if you kind of look here, um, you can see that I'm actually way off. So I can try to correct that here. Oh, letting go of it. So you can sort of try to correct for it here um, and then see if I line it up. But then what I'll do is I'll also sort of just look around my tumbler to make sure that there's no obvious wave in here. A slight wave here or there is, is okay. This is handmade, but anything sort of super noticeable, I definitely want to avoid having a super noticeable wave. So this actually worked out pretty good. Um, I'm happy with this. So I'm just going to take my thumb and follow around it. Now, when you're using a vinyl, like just the regular permanent or kind of vinyls, like your 651s, um, they tend to not really ripple. They're, they're pretty easy to lay flat. When you start working with your metallics, they can be a little bit more challenging, especially if you're working on a wider band. So on a wider band like this, I definitely like just using um, a vinyl like 651 that will allow me to just sort of um, go around it without really worrying about it uh, rippling up here or here, you know, like giving you any like puckers or, or anything like that. So that was my first step. My next step is going to be to add the dad label. So I've already chosen my side where I wanted it. And I think I want it about this height. That looks pretty good to me. So what I'm going to want to do next is I'm just going to turn this because I like to measure. Again, I do have a visual impairment. I am legally blind in one eye, so things kind of pull for me. So what I think looks straight uh, often is not. So to make sure that I'm not having that issue, I've just learned to measure. So I just pick one point, the same point on both sides, and I'll measure it and try to make it the same on both sides. Okay. All right, so that's good. This one was a little bit more challenging for me to kind of line up. Some days that happens. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, I've already cut it in the middle in the backing paper and I'm gonna take from the middle and I'm gonna press it down. And then I'm gonna use my thumb to press it on, pushing it outwards. And this is gonna help reduce the risk of air bubbles forming underneath my vinyl. Sometimes they still happen. Sometimes you have to lift it and try it again. Um, sometimes you have to cut a new decal because when you lifted it, you messed that up. So that does happen, but this does help to reduce that from happening. Okay, and I just want to push down really, really well, make sure that it's totally on there. So I'm just going to burnish with my fingers a little bit. And now I think that's on there pretty good. So now what I'm gonna wanna do is just peel off that transfer tape slowly, make sure everything is staying on the tumbler. There we go, and that looks good. Okay, so the final thing that I wanna do is I'm gonna be adding some gold screw detailing onto my band. So it looks like this. Okay. So, I, so I just grabbed a paint pen, something that's going to be visible on this here, but that I can also just rub away with a little bit of alcohol or acetone. Um, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use that same trick that I used when I had the skull damask and I was trying to measure um, where to put the damask around here to sort of have an even pattern around the tumbler. So the first thing that I'm going to be doing is I don't want to have, so my seam of my lid, I've kind of lined up to your center. So that's where you want to start. So that's pretty center to my decal. Um, I don't want to have though my, my, um, my nail or my screw, my screw, should I say here, right in the center of the decal. I kind of want to have it off on either side. So what I'm going to do is I need to first find um, half of the half. So a quarter of where this would, where this would be over just to kind of shift my center mark. So what I'm going to start off by doing is I'm going to start off by taking a fabric tape measurer because they're flexible. So they allow you 
to go around your tumbler and basically it's five inches so I would know that half of five inches is two and a half and I also know that half of two and a half is a quarter so I actually uh, sorry one and a quarter so what I actually am going to do is I am just going to kind of wing it just a little bit so that here is my first point and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line up the seam of my of my tumbler with that mark right there and then I'm going to turn my tumbler around to get my second mark which is going to be exactly halfway across the tumbler and then I need to find two and a half inches so the center part of this so I'm just going to measure from my two lines so you can see it's basically five right so I'm just going to find that 2.5 mark which is right here. I'm trying not to get it on my lid because I don't really want to have to clean it off my lid as well. And now I'm just going to take my center seam and line that up and then line this up here. So it may not be exactly perfect, but it is pretty good. So now what I'm going to do I'm just going to start taking my little screws and I'm going to more or less line it up with the center of the band. And with the center of my marks that I just made. So there's one. Same kind of deal. So I just kind of line it up sort of there and come straight-ish down. Two. You can always attach them. If you do buy the file, I have measured it so that they are equally distanced. And you can always buy the, or sorry, that you can always use the, um, the attachment tool on that file. Why do I have an extra mark? I don't, I'm good. Um, my, my eyes are playing tricks on me. Um, and then that way you can uh, actually just line it up once and then use the attachment tool that's already measured out for you. And you can just apply it around like you would um, the band. However, I didn't want to waste that vinyl. Um, this is one of the premium vinyls, the, uh, the gold metallic. So I didn't want to waste that kind of vinyl. So I just sort of measured it out myself, but that's always an option as well. So there we go. That is this here now. Now what I do want to mention is that when you're using these like metallic foil kind of vinyls, sometimes they do repel epoxy or sometimes it's easier to see, um, air bubbles on top of these here, or they form more on top of these. So what I do like to do is I like to do a, a coat of quick coat before I, I uh, do my next epoxy. And I also want to remind you that if you did do my method and you did mark your tumbler, just to take some alcohol and just clean off your marker prior to epoxying. You'll kick yourself if you forget to do that step. So that's that like that. So I'm going to do a coat of quick coat on here again. I'll be using a tackle on brush to apply it. You've already seen it. Then I am going to finish it off with epoxy until it is smooth. And then this tumbler will be done. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please support me by giving it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, please click my logo to subscribe and tickle that little notification bell so you'll be notified of future videos I post. You can also check out more of my videos by clicking on one of the thumbnails on the right or by scrolling through my playlist. Thanks again for watching and I'll be back for more Tumblr tips and tutorials.